So I get myself in a, a lot of trouble from time to time. I don't know if you're anything like that. Uh, I'm always being told that I'm not allowed to talk about religion and politics uh, whenever we we get together. And uh, you know, I, I think Christianity needs to be integrated into every aspect of your life. You know, if, if you're a Christian, if you're a believer, that doesn't just impact what you do on a Sunday morning. It, it, it impacts all of you, every decision you make, whether it's who you vote for, uh, to you know whether or not I suppose you even obey the laws. Um, anyhow, uh, I, I've been, been thinking about politics just a little bit. I'm, I'm not talking about politics, I guess, uh, today. It's not a political message, but it, it does it does kind of have some application here. Um, if you ever heard me talk previously, whether it's it's, it's here or read my blog or or um, uh, listen to me speak live. Uh, I, I, I often talk about history repeating itself, uh, especially throughout the Bible in modern times and, and even into the future. We have, we have Bible prophecy that says it's just a, a big cycle. It's going to continue to go on. Uh, especially when it comes to obedience of God's people, and, uh, circling over to disobedience uh, all the way around and around over and until, um, you know, usually into, into captivity and then into, into oppression until they basically pull their heads out of their, their rear and say, all right, God, we surrender, we submit, we understand we've been, we've been wrong. Um, here, here's something in, in 1 Samuel. I'm going to continue on in here. And, uh, i got a number of messages I'm pulling out of there. Um, think about this. Christianity in modern, especially modern Western culture here, uh, what's the pattern that we see here? In 1 Samuel 2, and you're going to see this if you think about America, uh, first, first Samuel chapter two, verses twelve through twenty-four says this: uh, The sons of Eli, and Eli was the the head priest, kind of the the, the big guy. Uh, they were worthless men. They did not know the Lord. They were often called the sons of Belial. Uh, they were they, they they did not know God. They were worthless people. Um, the custom of the priests of the people, uh, when any man was offering a sacrifice, uh, the priest servant would come with the meat was boiling, a three pronged fork in his hand. He would thrust into the pan, the kettle, the cauldron, the pot, and all the fork. And basically, it goes on. They were taking the best parts for themselves. They're supposed to leave the best parts for God. It goes down here. That the key one is in verse 16 and 17 on here. Um, if the man said to him, "You must surely burn the fat first, and then take as much as you desire," then he would say, "No, but you shall give it to me now. And if not, I will take it by force." So these guys, these are the sons of the head guy, and so they're appointed to this this office. Uh, they're not doing their job right. They're basically extorting people. It says in verse 17, Thus the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. And the men despised the offering. Now, the men here, they're talking about the Israelites. Those who are bringing offering. Basically, all the people that were following God, coming to give God a sacrifice, to worship Him, uh, they, they were being, they began to despise God because of His people. And this speaks, I mean, volumes. I mean, I, I could take that and run with that. I think I have if you go check on my blog. <clears throat> but basically they're doing this. In Romans chapter 2, um, you'll see kind of a parallel here. In Romans chapter 2, verse 24, it says, For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, just as it is written. People are saying God is worthless and unworthy because of his followers. Uh, and it's Frederick Nietzsche who said, um, this is a paraphrase, he said, I'll begin to believe in God as soon as his people show me that they do too. Um, you can, I mean, that's huge. Um, there was uh, St. Saint, Saint Benedict of Nursia. Um, one of the reasons he left and started the whole monastic movement was because because in, in a study that was probably was in, out, out of Corinthians, he, he began to realize, he says, I know better pagans, pagans who are leading more moral lives than the people that I work with in the church. Uh, and he basically, he, he rejected culture and withdrew from it because of that. Uh, 1 Samuel 8, and we're going to keep moving in 1 Samuel here, says this, as time is progressing now, Eli has left the scene, his sons were killed actually right after that, um, as God punished them. Chapter 8, verses uh, 1 through 3, it says, and it came about when Samuel was old, and now Samuel had taken over, that he appointed his sons judge over Israel. Okay, same thing, right? We've got uh, uh, more, more sons taken over for dad, and, you know, they have an office. Now the name of the first was Joel, the name of the second, uh, Abijah, and they were judging in Beersheba. His sons, however, did not walk in his ways, but turned aside after dishonest gain and took bribes and perverted justice. So this led 
this cycle, people begin to say, you know what, this guy guy, he's probably, he's obviously he's not worth it. So we've got the Sons of Belial kind of coming up again here. Um, and then the elders of Israel gathered around and came to Samuel at Ramah. And this is what happened. Now, now we're getting political. And they said to him, Behold, you have grown old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint the king for us to judge us like all the nations. They want to be like everybody else. But the thing was displeasing in the sight of Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, because cause see here, now God said, I want to be your leader. I want to be your ruler. I want to be, I want to rule over the hearts of my people. And the Lord said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the people in regard to all that they say to you. He's not saying, he's not validating what they're saying. He's saying, uh, for they have not rejected you, but they've rejected me from being king over them. This is listed as, and the people admit to this, as being a, a sin, because they chose, they chose their own ambition, their own way over what God had designed for them. Um, actually, I have a side note, I wrote my Bible right here. Democracy rejects God. These people said, we want a human, we want somebody that we can apply our will to, to be uh, lord and judge and ruler over us. We choose our own way, we choose the way of man. Now, democracy rejects God because of this. If you get enough people that say, hey, we like that, uh, let's do it. It's no longer wrong. I mean, you look at, I mean, look at modern politics. It's going all over the place. All we have to do is redefine the terms, redefine the words, and it's no longer uh, immoral. It's no longer bad. Look at, look at the... Um, We'll we'll take uh, abortion for one, uh, you know, just just for one of them. I, somebody was there's a debate going on with a, a friend of mine recently where uh, this person had said, you, you know, it's it's until it's born, it's not a baby. So that means in, as long as basically it's a partial birth abortion validation, as long as uh, a pinky toe is still inside, you can you can end this infant's life because it's not real uh, until it's fully delivered. Um, as long as we redefine things, we can have all the power, all the control. And that's, that's basically what the people wanted right here. And they admit that it's sin. They admit that they're disobedient later. Uh, and they repented of that. But, um, but here, now we're going to go over here to, uh, uh, to 1 Samuel chapter 10 as they're picking their king. Because God said this, I want only the best for you. Despite you rejecting me, despite you saying that, you know what, you're rejecting uh, who I am and my, my authority, and God is sovereign to, to rule over us, uh, God still wants only the best of options for his loved ones. They had limited their options, but God said, I still want the best of options for you. Right here in, verse, in chapter 10, verse 17, and after Samuel called the people together, the Lord of Mizpah, and he said to the sons of Israel, thus says the Lord of God, I brought Israel up from Egypt, I delivered him, uh, from, from the Egyptians and all the kingdoms that oppress you. But today you rejected your God who delivers you from all your calamities and your distress. Yet you have said, uh, set a king over us and therefore present yourselves before the Lord and your tribes and your clans. And Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel near and the tribe of Benjamin was taken by Lot. Then he brought the tribe of Benjamin near by its families and the matriarch family was taken. Then Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. But when they looked for him, he could not be found. So, so here's what's going on. So they're looking for Saul, um, uh, because he says, oh, where am I? He brought the tribe of Benjamin, and the Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. But when they looked for him, he could not be found. Therefore they inquired further to the Lord, has a man come here yet? So the Lord said, behold, he was hiding himself by the baggage. Um, so they ran and took him from there. And when he stood among the people, he was tall and any of the people from his shoulders upward. And Samuel said to all the Lord, do you see him whom the Lord has chosen? Surely there is none like him among all the people. And all the, all the people shouted and said, long live the king. So this is good news for you. Uh, what it means is, like I said, is that, is that God wants only the best. Now you might have limited your options, but God still wants you to have the best of options. Now those might even be hidden. You might have to look for them to search them out. Uh, but God wants the best for you. Samuel could have just moved on and said, "Oh, well, he's he's not here. I guess let's you know let's let's move on. I guess God, you know, maybe this was God's will that you know that he's obviously gone. So let's you know let's cost the next lot and pull out the next guy to be king." But the people went and they searched for 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 Saul. They searched for God's will. They searched for and waited for that best option to come to pass. God wants only the best for you, and I hope you have a great week. And I hope that helps you somehow.